Hey guys, another little video talking about gear and gear selection and gear placement and whatnot. Obviously this is one of those topics that really is so broad that it's hard to discuss online on forums, but it's obviously, it's even difficult to try to discuss here in just a little short, you know, 10, 15, 20 minute, God forbid, video. Um, you could really have multiple day and week long conversations about this because selecting your gear and what you want to use and how you want to use it is all going to be dependent on what the situation is and what your goal is for that situation. The mission drives the gear train. I'm sure you've heard that uh, before. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it's true. What your goal to accomplish is and combined with what the situation is, all drives how you want to set your gear up and what you're going to want to use, etc. So, to give you two different opposite things, you've got your get home bag and related gear and stuff in your vehicle. You're on the other side of town one day at work, something catastrophic happens, and now you find yourself having to get home. Um, and let, let's just say you've got to do it on foot, can't use your vehicle for whatever reason vehicles aren't running, I don't know, let's just pretend for the sake of argument, say it's an EMP strike or something. Um, it, that kind of situation, you're obviously wanting to get back home to your family, your, your rest of your you know, equipment and everything else. So you're going to grab your stuff and head out on foot. Well, that's the kind of situation that obviously walking down the street looking like I do right now probably wouldn't be applicable however and this is a totally separate video for another time remind me to do this somebody when you start talking about the gray man concept and blending in well what you may want is a small carbine or even just your handgun concealed like you would for daily carry small backpack and a change of clothes so you can throw on something other than just your work attire because if you're a if you're wearing a pair of dress shoes and a pair of dockers and a polo shirt or something might not be the best thing to try to get home with um, get out and go walking in the middle of the summer or winter or something 10 20 30 40 miles and see how you feel afterwards remind me to do another video on that anyway not to digress opposite end of that spectrum full-blown crap hit the fan civil war um, red dawn invasion whatever starts to look a lot more appropriate like this right okay well you can take those big open-ended scenarios and, and even break them down even further so let's go somewhere in the middle things have gotten bad crap's hit the fan You've packed up, grabbed your stuff, and headed off to your, your bug out location, your retreat, whatever. You're meeting up with your friends, family, your group, etc. You're still in that initial stages. Things are still unfolding. Um, law and order is breaking down more and more by the minute. Um, let's say you, you're you packing up and you're heading out to go to your, to your, your, your retreat. You're not sure what you're going to face. You're not going to... You're not sure if law enforcement is going to be having, you know, roadblocks and checkpoints set up or if they're going to be too busy dealing with, you know, rioting and looting and pure anarchy or whatever, or if they're even in a position to respond at all. I mean, just right there, you see how we can branch off into multiple different directions and each one of those could detail different points. Uh, and let me pause and just stay right here. You might want to grab a cup of coffee at this point. Um, this one may run a little long, so I'll apologize in advance if I do, but I appreciate those of you that can, can bear with me and suffer through all this. Um, so <clears throat> you jump in your car and you're not sure, so you want to take a little bit of a low profile, but you need to be ready to react in case maybe it's not a law enforcement checkpoint you come up on, but it's... Uh, people with less than honorable intentions who just decided to take advantage of the situation and 
are going to stop whatever vehicle comes down the road and take what's yours. You need to be able to react to that type of ambush or whatever. So you've got to find that happy medium. How can I not look overt so that I'm catching attention of law enforcement, military, whatever that I don't want, but yet still be able to react to a different situation of, you know, getting attacked on the way or something. That may be something where, since you're sitting in the vehicle and you're seated, you can have your handgun on a, uh, a, a belt kit of some time, some kind, sorry, and I, I won't call it a war belt because the kind of belt kit I'm talking about, most people will call it a war belt. It ain't a war belt. Handgun, couple of pistol mags, maybe a couple of rifle mags. That ain't a war belt. That's a self-defense, home defense, emergency belt. You ain't going to fight a war with that. Another video for another time. Not to digress again. So you throw something like that on. Maybe what you want, you've got your rifle stuck somewhere close by in your car, but it's out of sight you know, so that just somebody looking in the windows can't see it. At that point, along with your handgun, because it's around your waist and everything, and nobody can see it when you're sitting in the vehicle. Just a simple chest rig, which I would like to recommend a UW gear chest rig. Quite fond of those. Um, sorry, shameless plug. But on a serious note, that, that's kind of what we were shooting for. Something like um, our Minuteman or uh, Swamp Fox or whatever, e even the, the Mark II three mag Minutemans. Something just low profile, simple with nothing on it, couple rifle mags in it. Even one of our bandoliers, maybe that's even a better example. One of our bandoliers on that you can throw a button up shirt on over. And now you've got a little bit of kit on, you can support your rifle, you know, real quick if you needed to, but you're not overtly loaded down with gear. That gets you to your retreat. Now you're at your retreat. Okay, things have really gotten bad, the law and order's done, gone, no longer in existence. Um, again, hypothetical here, so just use your imagination and bear with me. Now you've got to start patrolling around your retreat. You've also got to start pulling security at your retreat. Right there, two different situations gear-wise. So for where we're going with this, let's just stick with, you've got to go out and start patrolling around your area. Um, there's an old saying that if you don't patrol the ground, you don't own it. So if you've got a piece of property you want to, want to own, you need to be out patrolling around it away from like where your actual house or campsite or whatever is because you need that advanced warning of anybody trying to come in. That's where your security patrols come in. Well for that, since you're just going to be out maybe on a day long patrol, you would want something like a small, uh, no bigger than like a three day pack, but probably more like a, an assault pack, patrol pack uh, kind of thing. Just enough to have enough stuff with it with you so that you're covered if it you run into rain or bad weather um, I mean a poncho or raincoat or something um, maybe a poncho liner depending on the time of year and the you know predicted weather conditions just enough stuff that you could maybe stay out overnight 24 hours if something happened and you couldn't make it back to your your house or base camp that you know that same day as you as you planned on but not a big loaded down deal um, You've got to think about your numbers at this point. If if it's just a two-man, maybe all the way up to a four-man, you know, patrol, you're going to operate a lot more like a recce type patrol um, than you would like a light infantry platoon. Okay, especially if you're not real sure about what you're going to face, because at that point you're not going to want to get into long-drawn firefights if you do run into somebody you're going to want to be able to beat feet and break contact and get out of dodge in a hurry. You're also planning on every day at the end of the patrol, you're going back to your, your base for, for resupply and whatnot. So you don't have to carry a loaded tick with you to sustain yourself for an untold amount of time. That could just be a simple chest rig. 
maybe you know, belt kit, maybe just a belt kit and no chest rig, uh, and, and your pack. Um, there's a couple of different ways you could mix and match that. We could even debate on the belt kit, do you want a handgun or no handgun? If you're just a two-man you know, recce team, mm, I would say handgun's probably pretty important to have quick access to, because if one of your gun goes down, you need something to be able to keep making bang noises you know, in a relatively quick manner versus trying just to fix your, your primary. Now, if you're all the way up to a four-man team or even larger, um, it, the argument could be made that a handgun becomes less important at that point because now your, 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 your backup are, are the other guys with you. If you've still got three or four other guys firing, you've got time to figure out, okay, what's going on? Why is this thing not working? You know, get it up and running again. Because um, you're going to be behind cover, right? Right. You're not going to be standing in the open doing this. You're going to be over there hiding behind something. At least you better be or you'll be dead. And then it won't matter. Okay. Um, now we can progress from there on up to where we were on the other end of the spectrum and we're going to skip stuff in between. Um, let's just jump all the way to full-blown Red Dawn invasion, um, blue helmets, brown shirts, and everything else. Well, if you've got to go link up with others and become part of a larger guerrilla resistance movement, then you're gonna, again, your gear setup's gonna be totally different. It'll probably be a lot more like what I've got here. Now, we wanted to talk about this, and yes, I'm throwing in some stuff from, from UW gear, but it's not just about us, okay? Get what's gonna work for you. I, I, I would love for it to be our gear, but if it's not, if there's something that works better for you, and you can run it and it works, drive on, man. Grab it, get out there, work the dog squeeze out of it, and, and rock it out. That's fine. I would hope that what we're offering works for you, and obviously I'm gonna be using that and talking to you and doing it, and, and giving you our thoughts from kind of our perspective of why we're making the gear that we're making and how we're making it. So, I don't want this just to be about UW gear, but, you know, try to think outside of that at the same time you're entertaining that idea. Our idea on our gear is to be a system. We're not looking at just one big chest rig with everything in the world on it and that's it. We're not looking at just a belt kit with everything in the world on it and that's it. Not saying there's anything wrong with either one of those ideas. If that's what works for you and that's what you prefer and you like, rock it out. This is just what our thoughts are. We like having a chest rig, a belt rig, a backpack, a couple of packs that all work together so that you can be loaded up like I am right now, but I can take any of this stuff that I have on and reconfigure it into various heavier loads, lighter loads, whatever, to suit whatever the mission is that I'm gonna do, <clears throat> what I wanna accomplish. So right now, I've got my chest rig on, I've got my belt kit on, I've got my large sustainment pack, and I've got my assault pack with the sustainment pack. Now, I'll go ahead and caveat this because I know somebody's gonna ask. No, I don't have my my pack completely loaded right now. I've got some stuff in it from one of our last trips out, but no, it's not completely loaded. I've, we're in that transition phase right now and I'm reconfiguring, going from winter mode back to summer mode. So I've got to dump my winter sleeping bag and all that and I'll go back to just my poncho liner and uh, a lot lighter load there and give me more room for stuff up top. But no, I don't have it fully loaded right now. My point is video is not to try to impress you with how much weight and load I can carry and all that. So just for conversation. But I've got everything here right now that you would want. We're talking full-blown guerrilla ops, okay? 
Now, the idea being with this, <clears throat> and uh, Max Velocity's talks to locks about this, you would go out, say you're going out on a patrol or mission, a, a longer range, true combat patrol. You're not going back to your house or, or uh, retreat or whatever in a night or two to, to, to resupply. You're gonna be out a week, maybe two weeks, whatever. You're gonna get to where you're going, we'll probably have to go in on foot. If, if God truly loves us, um, we'll still be able to use vehicles. I'm not counting on it, so you better follow Max and Mosby's advice and work on that PT and unfortunately uh, get, uh, get Plan Nike uh, up to speed because that's probably how we're gonna have to be moving. So that, that said, excuse me, you'll get to your patrol base, right? And you'll be working it on foot just like this, okay? When you get there, you're gonna dump your ruck. Now, allow me to pause right here real quick and we'll step into the second part of, of where we wanna go. Okay, so we're going in our patrol base. We get to where our patrol base is gonna be, where we're gonna set up operations at, right? When you get there, the idea is that you will dump your main ruck. It helps if you take the waist belt off first. Okay, so now you'll, you'll, you'll dump your main ruck cache uh, at your uh, patrol base or whatnot and this is where you'll start going out and conducting your your uh, patrol operations from or whatever it is that you're uh, set out to do right so at this point I'm not going to be carrying this bag with me out on patrol this is where it'll come in where I want my patrol pack at okay now we're a big fan, and I believe Max is too, of having your patrol pack and assault pack as part of your main pack and not, you, you got some stuff in it and some stuff in your main pack. If you had to dump this for whatever reason on the way to your patrol base or whatnot, you've still got your assault pack that you could grab real quick. In this case, I've just got mine where it stays underneath the, underneath the flap. Now I've got my patrol pack, right? And the idea being, I throw my patrol pack on, which this would kind of be the same setup as what I'd be running doing that patrol around my retreat area, right? So now I've just got my little patrol pack. You can see how it kind of fits with the belt kit, works with the chest rig. There's things you got to take into consideration with this. Make sure your straps work with your chest rig and aren't interfering with anything. Make sure you can still get to all your pouches. Make sure you can still get to your, your blowout kit, first aid. Again, see our dry fire and gear video. Get out there and try this stuff. Make sure it all works. Now I've got a lot lighter load on than having my big tick on, right? So now I can go out like this and conduct my my uh, patrol operation or whatever my mission specific task is. So for this, again, patrol pack, chest rig, belt kit. Our idea here is that <coughs> my belt kit is where all my sustainment stuff is at. My chest rig is my immediate fighting stuff. If we come into contact, okay, my chest rig is where I'll reload from. Then, as time permits, I'll take my sustainment pouches and reload my chest rig from there. I could also have spare mags in my, uh, in my patrol pack and reload the chest rig from, from it as possible saving the ones on my belt line for absolute last 
you know, last ditch, you know, use. Um, so now let's jump back again. And I know we're jumping around here, but I'm just trying to cover some different scenarios and situations. Again, all to get you thinking, get your mind thinking about what different potential scenarios you may want to set your gear up for. What all may you have to be facing. Um, don't get laser beam focused on one specific parameter and ignore everything else that you may have to, may have to face. So I could take this same setup here, drop the belt kit, and just have the pack and the chest rig, and maybe a handgun on my actual belt belt, my pants belt. I could drop the chest rig and just have the belt kit and the pack, and maybe attach a handgun um, to the belt rig. There, there's a dozen different ways that you can configure such a setup and scenario and make it work for you. So I guess that's probably the bottom line of what we're driving at here. Think about all the different situations you could, you could potentially want to be ready for. And yeah, it's a daunting task and it's a pain in the rear because it takes a lot of time, a lot of thought, a lot of energy, a lot of effort, um, and potentially a lot of money Although if you're smart with your money, um, you can accomplish a lot uh, with, the right, with the right stuff without breaking the bank. But you need to be able to cover a bunch of those situations. Um, if your gear is all set up for full-blown red dawn, blue helmet, brown shirt, guerrilla warfare, or even if it progresses beyond guerrilla warfare, Civil War II straight up, light infantry you know stuff if that's all your gear is set up and geared around it's gonna suck when you try to use it for some of the other the other things it's, it's gonna be too heavy too bulky too cumbersome not right i mean just whatever you need to have some variation in there and be able to tailor your gear have a heavier loadout have a lighter loadout be able to combine the two together to maximize your your uh, your money and whatnot so think about that think about how everything's working start looking at your backpacks um, we could probably do a whole other video on that if you'll look at how the belt line is and there's a thread on max's forum and there's uh, some over on our forum where we've talked about belt ribs and backpacks um, one of the problems with the long back internal frame rucks, they're very dependent on having that hip belt and waist belt locked down real low right around your hip bones to support weight. Well, if I've got this belt kit on, I can't do that. It's in the way, it's not gonna work. And that's why a short back external frame ruck like um, Tactical Taylor's Malice Pack, um, an Alice pack, a large Alice, medium Alice, the Molly 2s, um, even the CFP 90s to a point, um, things like that, they're gonna ride higher up. And that's one of the tricks is when you adjust the shoulder straps and the suspension and everything on those frames, one thing I really like about the Molly 2s, <clears throat> um, you can adjust how high the shoulder straps sit on the frame. You can pull them all the way down towards the middle and shorten that distance between the, uh, the kidney pad and the shoulder straps and raise it up so that that kidney pad is actually hitting, that's right, right about your kidneys and not your waist. Now, you're not gonna be able to lock it down around your waist and support all that weight on the, on the, on the belt not gonna happen. You're gonna have to bear more of the weight on your shoulders. Um, does it suck? Yeah. Is it possible? Yeah. Can you do it? Yeah. Does it suck? Like was it? Yeah. But the difference is having that pack and having your belt kit or having that long super comfy uh, long back ruck and no belt kit. It's gonna make it a lot more difficult 
We have dueling hawks right above me. Two of the largest ones you ever wanted to see. Hi guys, what's going on? Okay, sorry for the interruption there. Um, if you've got that long back rut, it's got to go around your waist. Belt kit ain't going to work. Just as simple as that. There's going to be compromises. There's going to be trade-offs. And I guess that's probably the final point that I'll make when it comes to your gear. The perfect gear setup doesn't exist. Um, we've tried to think of it. Far smarter people than Diz and I have tried to think of it. It don't exist. I don't care what anybody tells you. It doesn't exist. Not saying it won't exist. Saying it doesn't exist right now. There's going to be compromises. You just got to figure out where your compromises are going to be and how you're going to set it up. Um, again, we like splitting our mag load out up so it's not all just on the belt line. I've got my ready mags that I go to for immediate use right here on the chest. Reload from down here to my chest rig. Obviously, I can reload from down here if I had to, but hopefully my tactics and teamwork are sound enough that what I've got up here will allow me to get to a spot where I can replenish from down there from the pack. Um, so think about those compromises. Think about what you can live with and what you can't live with um, and how you're going to set it up and, and kind of go from there. Um, again, sorry this runs so long. Uh, and I know we, boy, didn't even barely just scratch the surface of this conversation but I'm hoping that it at least will you know get get somebody thinking uh, get the wheels turning get the scenarios turning in your head get the loadout turning in your head thinking about the situation what you want to do how many people you've got with you how they're gonna be equipped you know all that stuff is factors that you gotta gotta try to take into consideration so Think about that stuff, guys, and uh, love to try to carry on conversation further about it. Um, post it on Max's forum, post it on our forum, um, hit us up, whatever. Uh, we make gear, we love talking about gear, so uh, kinda, kinda what we do. Even more than that, we like using it and training. Closing, get out there with whatever you choose, train, train on your own, Go see Max, um, any of the other ones out there that, that know about Mosby, um, Mason Dixon Tactical, whatever. Get out there and train and then practice on your own. Take care, keep your powder dry.